think that, that there will be different transitions in different parts of the world, right? And uh, Latin America is starting from a very good point. Uh, the region as, uh, as a whole is uh, between 60-70% renewable already. There are pledges uh, done by all the countries in the region in order to go to net zero by 2050. But there will be fast countries and laggards because it's, it's the reality of uh, what we are living through. Each country is different. Countries that are high and middle class, they don't have many people in the poverty line and they're importers of energy. It's better for them to move faster and to have renewable energy and uh, uh, wean themselves away from the volatility of the, of, of the importing hydrocarbons and importing fuels. So that's going to happen rapidly. Other countries that have big resources that they want to monetize or big uh, swatches of people under the poverty line are going to take longer to, to, to get there. But during the pandemic, a lot of people stepped back and said, well, how, how are we living? What are we using for our resources? So that highlighted, we've seen carbon credits as an example of a market that exploded over the last two years, really coming out of the pandemic. So there's a dialogue at a much larger level of societies. It's kind of top, bottom, middle, everywhere people are talking about that. And ultimately, we believe that that will be a, a good thing. So the awareness is much higher. We have discussed many times about what's happening in 2050, 2060, and 2070. But if we follow what the scientific community is telling us, uh, and we have consumed the equivalent of this 1.1 degrees, and with a likelihood of more than 85%, we can have a breach uh, of this 1.5 degrees, and we should take measures in this, uh, in this decade, no? So it, this dialogue helped us in an openly uh, discussion okay, to uh, achieve more pragmatic solutions. Mm -hmm.